Some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Well, hello and welcome back to the channel, everybody. Today's video is a special request from one of my supporters and uh, a producer for a couple of channels, uh, Take Down Exposing Frauditors and uh, Frauditor Follies. So thank you very much, Ray Ray, for pointing me out to this video right here, which is basically this. Uh, Chris Cordova, a.k.a. Denver Metro Audits, well, he can no longer fraud it at this particular point in his career, so he's decided to go another route in dealing with the homeless situation in Denver, which is really funny because I don't see him dealing with uh, that situation really ever, uh, unlike his uh, frauditor buddy, uh, Regan Benson, who... Well, mix a spectacle out of it any, at any rate. Now, let's go ahead and sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Please turn on your mic. Public Speaking 101. Make sure your equipment is turned on so everybody can hear you, Cordova. I mean, that's just basic stuff right there. So, dude, next time, do better. Should be a button with a star. It'll make the mic green. There we go. There you are. Okay. And just your Hi. name and your address, Mr. Cordova? Um, hi, my name's Christopher. I'm not going to give my address. Uh, I'm here today to speak on the unsanitary bodily hygiene policy and the standards of behavior. This policy violates the 14th Amendment to the United States Constitution in two respects. First, the po policy improperly makes a personal attribute such as body odor a determinative factor in the city facility staff's enforcement of the policy. Because the policy's prohibition of offensive body odor is in no way restricted to instances of actual material disruptions, which are incompatible to city facility functions, the restriction impinges upon individual liberty and sanctions that which may not be sanctioned merely on the basis of body odor. Highlighted in yellow, quote, creating a nuisance to or impeding use of a city facility by others, end quote, body odor bugs. Highlighted in pink, Quote, may result in warning, immediate removal, and or removal slash exclusion up to 90 days, end quote. This rule should be void for vagueness because the only indication within the policy as to what constitutes a nuisance is, quote, body odor bugs. Moreover, the policy neither contains nor refers to identifiable stand standards, thereby failing to provide adequate notice to citizens wanting or in some cases needing to conduct business in an Inglewood City facility. Because this rule impinges, impinges upon individual liberty in an arbitrary and discriminatory manner without cause, justification, or reason, this rule violates the due process clause of the 14th Amendment. Well, Cordova, uh, I got something to say about that. If you think it violates the uh, 14th Amendment, this is not the place you should be arguing that at. You should take it to the courts themselves because it is not you, it is not this council, it is the courts that decide if something is unconstitutional. Definitely not you, because if you had to say in what's constitutional, unconstitutional, well, we'd all be in trouble. And I also got something else for you, Cordova. If you actually want to know about a lot of other uh, cases that violated the 14th Amendment, I'll leave a link in the description box below. I mean, many of these cases were actually taken, all, all these cases, in fact, were taken to the Supreme Court because people felt they violated the 14th Amendment. That is the due process right there. You go through the courts. Secondly, since the city manager, Sean Lewis, enacted this rule with the explicit intention of restricting persons with body odor access to Inglewood City facilities, such action violates the Equal Protection Clause of the 14th Amendment, highlighted in blue. Quote, these standards of behavior protect the rights and safety of visitors, employees, and volunteers, end quote. It does nothing of the sort. To the contrary, this policy serves to violate the rights of visitors. Highlighted in green, quote, 
Warning, removal, and exclusion for violation of these standards are supplemental to all other actions authorized by law, such as criminal charges, end quote. A violation of this rule is not criminal by nature, yet paragraph two of the purpose statement implies that failure to comply with the rule could result in criminal charges, presumably to arrest uncooperative individuals pursuant to the criminal trespass law. The difficulty with this conclusion is that CRS 18-4-504 third degree criminal trespass requires a voluntary act distinct from violation of this rule. Once again, Cordova, you prove your own ignorance of the law because it says right here, enters or remains on the premises, which basically means that just like any other trespassing law, if you are, don't leave when they ask you to, and you're remaining on the property, you are essentially trespassed. Dude, do better. You cannot trespass someone from public property that is open to the public while they are conducting legitimate business or engaged in activity that aligns with the mission of the facility unless they commit a crime. <laughs> oh, wait, you serious? Let me laugh even harder. <laughs> oh, my goodness, Frauditor. Are you that damn stupid? How many times have you been trespassed from uh, any property and you still don't fucking get it that you can be trespassed if you don't follow the policies of that particular establishment? Are you that freaking stupid? Oh, wait, it's Christopher Cordova I'm talking about here. He's one of the biggest morons on the planet. That a person found in violation of a rule may feel inclined to remain on the property does not thereby transfer the rule into criminal provisions. Basically what this is is an attack on homelessness. Any law or rule made by government must be narrowly tailored and viewpoint neutral. The rule is clearly not viewpoint neutral as it discriminates against the homeless for having body odor, something in which they have no control over as they are incapable of taking regular showers and having access to deodorant. Furthermore, what is offensive to some may not be offensive to others. In the 60s, some people found black people to be offensive. What the fuck? <laughs> are you shitting me, Cordova? You are going to compare the plight of the African American community in this country having to deal with slavery, discrimination, through Jim Crow laws such as whites only and blacks only, uh, restaurants, water fountains, bathrooms, and everything like that. Boy, you've got a lot of screws loose in your head if you actually think there's a comparison to that. I mean, yeah, the uh, homeless have it rough because of things that are out of their control. But the, but the African American community, well, they had it a lot rougher for over 300 years in this country. So enough with the frickin' false equivalent fallacies that you pull right out of your ass every single time. It's not working. But I think we can all agree that banning someone from public property based on the color of their skin, something in which they have no control over, just because some may be offended by their presence, is immoral and unlawful. Just as banning a homeless man with body odor, something he has no control over, just because some may be offended by his presence, is immoral and unlawful. And uh, still a false equivalency fallacy right there, buddy, because the African-American issue is a civil rights issue, while the homeless issue is an economic issue right there, fundamentally, because, well, a lot of these people end up on the streets because, well, they lose their homes, because they lose their jobs, because of the ups and downs of the economy. If you want to see how bad it can get, take a look at the, the Great Depression. Or, take, or talk to anybody that survived the Great Depression. You'll know how bad it can get. So not only is this a violation of a homeless man or woman's civil rights protected under the 14th Amendment to conduct business on public property, but the city manager, Sean Lewis, drafted the standards of behavior policy with such generality that it risks ensnarement of anyone who walks through the door of an Inglewood City facility in a net designed for others. This gives government too much power and discretion. If a public employee doesn't like someone or doesn't like their conduct, even if it's lawful, all they have to do is say, you have body odor. 
And lastly, this is in violation of the First Amendment. In the 1943 case of Martin v. City of Struthers, the Supreme Court ruled the First Amendment includes freedom to receive speech as well as the freedom to speak. So we have a First Amendment right to access the library downstairs, body odor or not. Uh, Cordova, I don't know where you got that conclusion from, because that's certainly not what uh, that particular case is all about. It was about a Jehovah's Witness who uh, was distributing leaflets in the area and was fined ten dollars for it. Well, it went all the way to the Supreme Court, and uh, well, they said that you can't stop her from doing it, but well. There are still trespassing laws. You can definitely trespass somebody off of your property if you uh, feel it's necessary. So, Cordova, this does not work out in your favor. Why do you keep continuously self-sabotaging your arguments, dude? I mean, come on, now read the freaking cases and actually understand them. I will end this with the 1886 case of Norton v. Shelby County. A, con a unconstitutional act is not a law. It confers no rights. It imposes no duties. It affords no protection. It creates no office. It is, it is in legal contemplation as inoperative as though it had never been passed. That's all I got. And if that's all you had, then it was most certainly a pathetic showing to begin with. All you did was bear... Uh, well, false equivalency fallacies talk about cases that really have nothing to do with what uh, you're talking about and probably support the opposition uh, to what you're doing. I mean, come on now, dude, you have proven time and time again that you are a freaking moron. And that's the biggest reason why you lost your case and you had to well, quit frauditing for a while and get yourself a real job because you don't know shit about anything. And this continued to prove it. So at any rate, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next one. Dude, so there's no way I can get in, bro? Come on, I'll put you on my YouTube. But shut up, Wesley. You gotta put signs up, ma'am, if it's- Are you Glenn Serio? Who's that?